each year, hundreds of mantas migrate up the coast of Central Florida. These are mostly large adult manta rays, and it's one of the largest aggregations of manta rays in the world. So we have very little knowledge about this population of manta rays. We often see courtship or mating behavior. We also see mantas feeding, which means this could be an important reproductive or foraging area for these manta rays. Anglers are interested in manta rays it's because of the cobia that travel with the manta rays. So cobia fishing is one of my favorite type of fishing to do. You're searching, you're looking with your eyes, you're predicting where you think these animals are gonna be, and then you have this fight. So it's a super exciting, you get this adrenaline rush, it's a, just a really cool magical fishery. It's, it's a pretty unique way to fish for cobia. They are a fun fish to catch, and better than catching them, they're a great eating fish, and that's why people chase them so much. And nowadays, with so many boats coming at them, they're staying down a lot more, and we're not seeing the rays like we used to see, and we're not seeing the cobia like we used to see. You know, back in the day, I don't recall seeing many rays without cobia, and in the past few years, it's harder to find rays with cobia. You know, word of mouth back in the day is how we used to find out when the manta rays were around and when the cobia were here. And you just happened to be out there at the right time and there wasn't something like social media out there that somebody, you know, makes a good catch on a cobia and takes a couple of pictures of it and puts it out and said, hey, look what I got yesterday, look what I got today. You know, a thousand people see that, you're gonna have, you know, 500 people out there the next day looking for cobia, looking for the rays. Unfortunately, a lot of those people are going to be pretty careless and not practicing the right way to approach them and fish them. They don't take the time to approach the cobia right. They don't take the time to make the right cast because you might have three or four boats that saw the same manta ray and they're all coming and converging on this ray at the same time. It's not safe and it's definitely not safe for the manta ray. Globally, manta populations are declining and they're listed on the U.S. Endangered Species Act as a threatened species. From our research in Florida, the th main threats we see to manta rays are from entanglement in fishing gear and from strikes from boat propellers. We conducted a study in collaboration with expert anglers to develop a best practices guide for fishing cobia around manta rays. This video will feature tips about how to catch cobia without disturbing manta rays. You have to approach these animals uh, in a way that you're not disturbing them because the least disturbed they are, the more calm the cobia is gonna be. As soon as a, a manta ray breaches, everybody races to the manta, uh, manta ray and he's gone. If you're on plane, just on the throttle, back off, on the throttle, off, well, that sounds really, really different. You could spook the ray, it'll go down and along with it going down, the fish are probably gonna go down with it. Manta rays travel in schools a lot. And how do you know there's not five or six more manta rays around when you're zooming up to them? I've heard of people hitting these and hitting the manta rays. It's not worth it when you see a manta, manta ray breach out there and everybody's converging on that, on that fish. It's so like I said, it's, it's not safe and it's definitely not safe for the manta ray. Stop, let those guys chase that ray and wait for another ray to pop up. They're gonna be trying that, that ray a lot. I would like to come kind of parallel with the ray or slightly in front of it. With the boat ideally positioned straight off the side of the manta ray. I don't like a change in the RPMs. You wanna keep a distance, come up kind of slow, slowly cruising along and working your way up to rays, you have a really good chance of getting yourself into the right position. That is what we're looking for right there. It's important to notice the behavior of the manta rays. Sometimes they're relaxed feeding at the surface and other times they breach and dive back down immediately. When they're doing this behavior, it's very difficult to fish around them and you just have to exercise patience until they want to stay at the surface. You've made your approach on the ray just right and you're waiting for the ray to come to you. Wait and look and see. If there's no fish around the ray, there's no, not even any use to cast around it. That's a big ray. No cobs though, no cobs. We're gonna move on, keep looking. If you can see fish, you wanna have your fish, the fish between you and the ray. 
And even if they're on the other side, I would say you can almost always talk them into eating the lure or the bait where you want them to. So if you cast on the far side of the ray, first off, you got a good shot of hooking the ray. Last thing you want to do is cast to the far side of the ray and hook a fish. Now you have a 12-foot animal between you and your you and your fish, and that Kobe is going to run to that ray for protection. Practice your casting, get good at it. My boat's over here. I want to make my lure land like right in front of the ray's face, but maybe like 10 feet out. So 10 feet in front of the ray. And what that means is by the time you start reeling, you have no shot of hooking that ray. Usually with the rays, you're finding them up top. So you don't need a real heavy lure. I like the swim baits. Uh, it is a sinking bait, but it doesn't bomb down like a two or a three ounce uh, bucktail. And once that ray gets by you, even if there's a fish on the underside or around that ray, I usually don't even try to make a cast because, you know, the hookup ratio on the manta ray is going to go up tremendously. If you know you're not going to be able to make the cast, don't do it. That's, that's some of the best advice I can give. And if you know you can make the cast, hey, it, it's, it's going to be, uh, the hookup ratio is going to be a lot better if you take your time and make the perfect cast to that fish. If you throw and you see that it's not going to go in the right spot, Put your hand over the spool. Hold that rod really high up and rip it in really fast to try to skip your bait across the surface. That's probably the easiest and most successful way. You're better off ripping that lure in and getting ready and getting into position to make a new cast than you are snagging the ray and probably ruining your chances at any fish on that ray. You know, unfortunately, hookups with rays are gonna happen. It's usually right on the front edge of the manta ray where you see 15, 20, 30 lures hanging off of these things, and it's just not a pleasant sight. They look like Christmas trees coming through, and if you ever hooked a ray, they're instantly gone. At that point, it's the, the ray's going away so fast, so cup your spool as tight as you can, and don't try to bend the rod, but point it straight at it. And once it gets tight enough where it feels like everything's gonna break, you can give it a little tug, and most of the time, it's gonna break right at the knot, and he's not gonna have 15, 20 feet of you know line hanging off of him. You hope that anyway. That's something that manta ray could potentially have to deal with for the rest of its life or get entangled in and have that line cut into it. Long trailing line can become entangled around a ray and cause serious injuries. Manta rays will do these behaviors where they make these loops when they're feeding and this line wraps around them and around them and can truncate their, the end of their wing tips. It can truncate the fins coming out of their face called their cephalic fins. Um, and this can cause real harm and very um, serious injury to the manta rays. The cobia size now is 36 inches. The state and federal is 36 inches, uh, which is a pretty good sized fish. That's really like a 15 to 20 pound fish. You're uncertain whether it's a legal fish or not. Or you think it's too small, uh, don't try to gaff it. I mean, that fish needs to, needs to grow up, reproduce, and make more little ones like that. Yeah, having a, a, a big landing net is a great idea. I want to minimize even pulling that fish out of the water if possible. So in the time I've done the manta ray thing, it's always been something that's been like a really tight kept secret amongst anglers. Now, this is coming from a guy that makes YouTube videos for a living. Now, I can tell you, if you saw my manta ray video, there's a really good chance there's no longer manta rays where my video was filmed because it's just something I kind of hang on to and that's because just the way social media and everything is now, uh, there's so many people targeting these rays. And I would just say, if you're doing it, build your own network. Don't use Facebook. Use people that are gonna, where you can benefit each other. People do like to brag and they do like to show their catches off, but do it a month later. Don't do it right then, do it a month later. Everybody save your pictures up. That way everybody knows, oh, that's what he got during when the Cobia were here. I gotta get out again next year. Even when the fish aren't around, you see, like one of the biggest water creatures that's not got sharp teeth that you're gonna see in your entire life. The manta rays are something else. And you know, it's, it's pretty exciting just to have a manta ray come up and swim underneath your boat and see them. They're a majestic, beautiful animal. We hope that people will follow these best practices for fishing cobia around manta rays um, and maintain respectful relationship with other anglers out on the ocean, as well as the cobia and manta rays. The most important takeaway message is to be patient, to be calm and to be slow. If you scare a ray, you're not gonna catch cobia off of it. So 
Um, reducing harassment to the rays and reducing hooking of the rays improves your chances of catching a cobia. You know, working with anglers in this area for manta research and conservation is really, really important. You know, it's only by working together that we're gonna be able to make positive changes for the future. Now, you can contribute to science by reporting your manta ray sightings to the Florida Manta Project. These provide important information about their spatial and temporal distribution that we can use to learn more about them.